Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Just Carve Rob. And what are we doing while we're carving? We've got that Bauer uh, battery-operated rotary tool from Harbor Freight. And it's been working a treat, I tell you. It's been working a treat. We've got that uh, Saw Extreme Burr from Cutsaw in there. It don't even care, friends. It don't even care. It's just a ripping and a ripping. That's what it does. And we'll be doing a lot of, uh, well, we'll be doing some knife work in here, if that interests anybody. Um, I'm a big fan of sharp, sharp equipment. Yep. Big fan of it. Lag the knives. Have fun with them. I don't need power when I'm out and about, but now I have that option with this fancy new rotary tool. We can put that right in the truck, couple batteries, and uh, go to the park, go to the beach, go fishing. Out fishing. The fish aren't biting, but you, it's too beautiful of a place to just walk away from. Make sure you throw your battery-operated tool in there, your your traveling carving knife set that I've got, throw that in a boat, a good buddy, some beer, and some worms, and if the fish aren't biting, heck, carve yourself a bobber, you can carve yourself a fishing lure, you can uh, carve little cowboy heads, yeah, you can do that too, but uh, yeah, here we go, now we've got the Cuts All Extreme Flamber. Uh, or one of our favorite burrs that we like to use, and we're working on that cowboy hat. And there you go, okay? We're cutting both sides of that block down on a 45-degree angle. Now, you guys got to remember, this is the first time I've ever done this. This is more or less a prototype that turned into the finished product. I got so far into it, I'm like, I don't need a prototype. Okay, this is a flame burr, 332nd shaft, carbide steel and I like using these in my Oz Elite here or to uh I'm just framing that facing that we learned how to do over there from our buddy Kevin at Sticks and Stones old Kevin's been missing in action yep hope he's okay sent him a couple messages haven't heard nothing back from him but Kevin does disappear, and he disappears for years at a time. So hopefully he'll be back, and we'll be able to get more tips and tricks from Kevin. I've got some designs from him that, since I miss him so much, I'm going to have to carve a Kevin uh, Doherty thing. <laughs> Not going to tell you until I do it. I want it to be a surprise. Okay, I'm uh, marking in where the nose is. I'm marking in where the eyes are going to be. Um, that kind of stuff. Getting that nose set. I'm actually using the radius of that. This is a coarse flame burr, the silver. And I'm using the radius on the side of that football burr to actually set the curve in my nose. You know how your nose curves out at the snot holes? Yeah. So I use the side of that burr. I, I was carving. I'm like, look at that. That would that fit right in there. Yeah, right in there. Yeah, we've had a, a lot of a lot of carving friends go missing this year. Dan Caprio, C A R P I O. He was uh, he's a whittler. I used to like watching him. And uh He's gone missing. And uh, Ben's studio on the lake. Ben's had a rough year, so. Hope Ben's doing well. And Kevin over at Sticks and Stones, hope he's doing well. And we've got some new wood carvers coming into the uh, action here. Amy Joe out there in Colorado. Yep, Amy Joe. And uh, so many new carvers. And, uh, say hi to Aiden Fletcher. 
I think that's what his name was, Aiden Fletcher. He always leaves me comments on my videos. Nice guy. And, uh, yeah. So you can see we're getting the ear set. That could just be hair. If you just don't want to do ears and just do hair, you see where I dropped that down for the ear? You just go right around the head, and that could be his hair. Yes, hair. This guy's going to be wearing one of them big old buffalo jackets. You know, it's cold out there in Montana. So, yep. He got a $10 horse and a $40 saddle. He's going to punch some longhorn cattle. He has to go to Texas, not Montana. I heard he got in, a, got in a fight with the foreman. Him and the foreman got in spat. So he hit him in the head with his 10-gallon hat. Yep, then he ki yippy 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 aid yippy aid Then he ki yippy 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 aid <laughs> All right. Yes, taking way, way too much pain medication today. All right, so. Spike. All right, all right, all right. How you doing, Spike? Hey, Spike. What's got ten toes and not your feet? What's got ten toes and is not your feet? It's my feet. Ah, ah, ah. Not your feet, but my feet. Uh, yeah, that's a stupid dad joke. Yep. Okay. Now we're working them jaws down. I want to give him kind of a thin face. A, a thin face. We're not going to put a beard on him. He's a cowboy. He's not a, not a gold miner. So we're going to give him a thin face. And we're going to give him that famously gigantic, enormous mustache. That one of my favorite cowboy uh, guys is. Sam Elliott. Yep. So we're going to give one of them great big honking Sam Elliott mustaches. And all he's ever going to do is sit in a beer bottle. <laughs> we know that's the way it goes sometimes. Keep the spiders at bay. Working the mirrors in, undercutting that nose. This is uh, where I decide to set the width of the bottom of my nose and you can see I'm, I'm working that nose down and the uh, cheeks back I learned on on when you're doing the upper part of the eyebrow ridge I used to cut it almost straight in you know like the wood spirits and I'm like but that makes it harder to put an eyeball in there right because you got the straight in cut so I've almost been cutting that down you know, if you go from the forehead straight down, uh, I've been cutting that more flat. And that already starts the upper eyelid for me. So uh, I hope that helps you. Just some uh, information there. So where your eyebrow is, instead of cutting in straight to make that eyebrow ridge, I cut down at like, oh, well, if zero is straight up and down, I would say about 30 degrees, right? Don't want, even at that 45, it's still too steep. You want less than that. And I learned that trick from my buddy over there at Wood Psych. Always waited till last, put the eyes in. But after watching him carp, he like, as he works the face in, he gets that nose in and then starts the eyes right next to the nose before he gets the nose all the way cut in. So go over and check out Wood Psych. He's got some pretty cool videos over there. Uh, he does a lot of uh, faces. And the last one he just did in a big pine knot was awesomeness. Yep. Wood Psych. Go check out Paul over at Wood Psych. And who's that other guy I watch? Um, can't think of his name. I can see him, but I can't think of his name. Yep, my mind is slipping into poop. <laughs> slipping into poo. Uh, 
of course, everybody watches Doug Linker and Carving and such and Kevin Coates. And let's not forget about the original YouTuber, the OG of YouTube in the carving community, Gene Messer, the godfather of flat planes carving. Love Gene's work. Gene is probably the first uh, YouTube video I ever watched on carving. Um, I, I, I had bought some books and... Uh, I'm dating myself now, but uh, some videotapes. <laughs> now we go live to the video cassette. And uh, as far as YouTube, Gene Messer was the first guy I ever seen wood carving. And he has set me on down this road to wood carving. Thanks a lot, Gene. Appreciate it. Or I don't, I shouldn't be, be calling him Gene. I should be calling him Mr. Messer. Mr. Messer. Because, like, we're not. I've, I've talked to him a couple times online, but that's about it. Um, show your elders respect, friends. I know we still have manners in this country somewhere. I've been looking for them, ain't found them, but I know somewhere in this country, people still do have manners, right? So, thank you, Mr. Messer. Okay. Then we got Wood uh, Jordy over at Carving Fusion, my buddy Jordy, my war, my Warframe friend, yeah, he's been busy, busy with the chainsaw, he's whipping things up over there like you wouldn't believe, I can't tell you, I can't tell you, because when I tell you, he always yells at me, I wasn't going to tell him yet, I wasn't going to say anything about that yet, okay, well, I'm not saying nothing, 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 but I know, ha <laughs> ha! And, uh, yeah, we're just cleaning that face up. We're getting that, that big old mustache worked in. We're getting the sides of his jaw set. And I thought I only had two of these bottles, but I guess I got three of them. Uh, so we're going to put a cowboy in one and a something in another one and another something in another one. I don't, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. No, it's not going to be a cat. Uh, could be. What kind of beer... Cat piss, cat piss beer. <laughs> Jordy and his dog piss wood. I'll have cat piss beer. Uh, so, yeah. And it takes a minute to get that mustache cut in there because I want a big, thick, bushy mustache. You know why cowboys got shit in their mustache, don't you? I'll tell you. Looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> That's disgusting. Disgusting, Rob. It's been a hard day's night here. Haven't been getting much sleep. Between my shoulder and my back, they're both trying to kill me. I'm just wondering which one's going to win first. All right, so. I decided we're going to put the buffalo jacket on this guy, so. He's going to have a big, thick collar. And I apologize uh, before we even get there. The camera moved, so the layout for that, you're not going to get to see too much of it. Just the top of his head, basically. Um, yeah, so that that bummed me out. I must have hit it with the brim of my hat because the camera's kind of right in my way. And when I was carving, I must have hit it with the brim of my hat. And... Once you carve something and you miss carving it, there's it's not like you can go back and do it again unless you start a whole new guy. And uh, this has already taken me uh, eight days, on and off, eight days, yeah. It gets very, very tedious. And you can see there again, there's a camera. I, I didn't have it. I, I tried zooming in too much. And we're cutting the sideburns in. That's right. Cowboys have sideburns. Man, what is it? We get two warm days and the whole mosquito population comes out. 
the whole freaking mosquito family from all over the country breaks out and all decides to live in my little man cave. So, and it was too warm to keep the door closed. So you got the door open and mosquitoes work off from carbon monoxide that you exhale. So it's like they got their own human detector. Next thing I know, I'm swarmed at about five or six o'clock at night every night. You can hear them coming across the field. Sound like a bunch of helicopters. And here they come, man. Blood sucking hypodermic needles. Flying hypodermic needles they are. And you know it's bad. It's when one lands on you, you smack him, and you know you got him before he bite got to bite you and he's already full of blood. You know. Who was he sucking on or what was he sucking on before he got to me? You know. And we already know that mosquitoes can transmit uh, malaria, hysteria, all that good stuff. So that's what he's looking like. And, okay, you're going to say, well, it's too big. The block of wood's too big. No, because we're going to incorporate our plug cork thing on the bottom of this. It's just going to be basswood because we're not having any real liquid. Just going to keep the bugs out of the bottle. Now, if I was doing this for a real wine bottle, I would get a wine cork and a stainless steel screw. And then you could drill, a, drill right through the center of the wine cork and take the stainless steel screw. We go right into your bottom of your bottle topper thing, this thing here. And uh, you probably have to sand that wine cork down because you know when you pull it it's like when you pull a cork out of a wine bottle that thing grows eight times the size of the hole it was in so i know i've seen people try putting corks back in wine i personally don't care for wine but that's just me um so to make that cork fit back in the bottle better you can either buy one of them rubber stopper things that they sell at the store and take that off and put it on this. Or you could, if you like wine, and you got wine bottle corks laying around, you can use the uh, stainless steel cork thing, the stainless steel screw in the cork, and you could you would have to, which it would let you do it better, easier, if you have the, the screw through the cork. You can take it to a belt sander and sand it down so it fits in the... Pits back in the hole in the bottle, snug, but not so that you've got to press it in, because you're going to want to pull it out when you want more wine, right? So, blah, 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 yap, 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 driving everybody crazy. Most any of you guys that drink wine know about bottle corks. You definitely would not want to try using something like this on a, uh, probably anything with carbon dioxide in it, like soda, soda pop, 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 ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. soda pop, because, uh, well, you can do it unless somebody shakes it up, and then it's going to launch your cowboy across the room. Poo! There he goes. Yeehaw! Ride the cork. So we've got a flame burr diamond burr in here, and we're just sanding things. Sanding, sanding, sanding. I probably could have cut that bottom jaw narrower yet to give him more of a skinny face. But I figured, I said, this is good enough. Because we gave him a five, we're going to give him five o'clock shadow too. We're putting the eyelashes in or the eyebrow hairs in right now with that uh, little diamond burr. And we're going to split that mustache at the top and round it down. Round it from each side to the middle. Back down there on the lip again. Working the uh, hairs on that mustache. Getting them pressed up underneath there. That's what we're doing there. And now the, the little dimple, 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 dimple thing I'm doing there is going to be for the 5 o'clock shadow. Right? That's what that's going to be for. And then we're just cleaning up a little bit here and there and everywhere. And I zoomed in for you. Now I'm zooming back out. And this is what he's looking like right now. We got to trim them ears down a little bit. They're looking, share, subscribe, and like. 
be awesome, carve something awesome, carve every day if you can. And I'm showing you there, uh, where, that's where the collar is going to be. And I don't know what happened. I lost some footage here somewhere. Or I forgot to hit record, or I thought I hit record. Because sometimes you'll touch record on the phone. And if you don't double check and make sure, yeah, sorry, the camera moved. That's what I was telling you earlier about the camera issue. So, what the heck was I saying? Oh, the collar on the on his uh, buffalo skin jacket. Because they didn't have bomber jackets back when there was buffaloes. They didn't know what a bomber was. So, this is going to be the buffalo skin jacket. You see I'm rounding that over with the knife. That way there I don't have to have the vacuum running. That noisy thing. Probably got the music blasting in the background. And uh, we're carving this guy here. Timothy Reed. Say hello to Timothy Reed. Therapy 49. Haven't seen him around. But he works for uh, one of the big auto manufacturers in Detroit. So they're probably keeping him busy. Uh, he was making some wicked, wicked cutting boards and uh, custom pencils and pens. Mechanical pencils and pens. And there he is. That's what he came out looking like all painted up. See the 5 o'clock shadow? Yep. Buffalo jacket? Yep gray hair and everything that's how it, it was fitting really tight at first and then after it's set and dried it shrunk up a little bit so that's all right share subscribe and like help a bro out hit that like button bye bye